Hello guys. Hello everyone. Remember that we all are where? Yes, you know it. We all are in the H5P guys. <laughs> Whoops. Whether you want to accept it or not. Whether you love it or not. That's why today we're going to show you, today we're going to learn, we all going to learn the triple A server or triple A service. Whoops. So in networking you will find this topic as an advanced service. Why? Why you think this is an advanced service, guys? Why 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 you 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 wonder? So Triple A server will help us with something called access control. So, just to give you some hints, very beginning. Okay, so today we're gonna uh, talk a little bit Triple A server. We're gonna start discussing what is Triple A, right? Then we also gonna cover why we use it, the reason we use it. I already give it like basically why we companies deploy AAA stuff or technologies. So why we use it, right? So what else? Some historical background the historical background we're gonna cover in with uh, the RFCs we wanna check um, well yeah two basically two uh, RFCs we're gonna check the 2139 and then we're gonna check the 1492 so then we're gonna explain why this guys coming over then we're gonna explain two flavors. Within networking, we're gonna see two main flavors of triple A service. We're gonna see something start with T and something start with R. I think you already know, right? And then we're gonna explain the triple A as is, which is authentication, authorization, and accounting, right? So yeah, this from TechX. Oops, some chat coming. Then R from Radius. Okay, and the triple A. Then yeah, I think that's it. Access control. Yeah, I I explained to you the very beginning. So it, everything is related with access control. So I want you to keep in mind, I want you to create some mental map that always that you refer to access control, not always, but I mean, always you refer to triple A service, you will refer to access control. So for instance, like this is your home, typical you know, stereotype of how of a house. So one person owns the control of this house, whether it's your dad, your mom, you live or yourself, you yourself uh, own the control, the access control of this place, right? So if this is a homeless guy, someone will say, "Hey, dude." And it's coming. No way. So basically, access control and information technology will be basically to have the access control of your infrastructure within IT. Basically, like a summary, like a overview. Okay, so let's start with 
with um, what is an AAA server. Okay, guys, so let's start with what is. So let's uh, split here the A's. So what is AAA? It, AAA is uh, the first one is authentication. So let's explore one by one, okay? So what about an authentication? So imagine you are Bob, right? And Bob want to get to your apartment, right? You need to know Bob is Bob, right? You need to know he's not a homeless. Like if he's, uh, you know, ringing the bell, and in somehow you don't have a smart bell because now like everyone has a smart bell <laughs> anyway so how you can identify Bob if you don't have a camera by boys right but what about the homeless can uh, imitate perfectly Bob's best friend the voice so how come you can value identify so basically authentication authenticates the user it helps us to identify that Bob is Bob that the user is the user right so in IT used to be with uh, credentials which is username and password right the AAA server used to get in somehow connection with the access, uh, with the active directory directory right a direct 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 dude i feel my english is so rusty i don't know what's going on i've been pronouncing my like my mother language which is spanish so active directory right i think so well anyways so you can synchronize your uh, your uh, AAA server with the Active Directory. For those who know, we have some dependency here, right? The LDAP. So we use LDAP to synchronize. So rather than using, uh, sorry, rather than using like independent database of a username and password, you can use the Active Directory to authenticate the user that's awesome that's just authentication right to know who is Bob like to know that Bob is Bob to know the user is the user what you think is the user right okay so imagine Bob is inside your apartment so this is a zoom out of the apartment so Bob is here okay so this is your private uh, bedroom right is he allowed to get here is he allowed to get to the kitchen who knows you only know because you own the, the the control of the apartment right bedroom with a lot of ima imagination it's a bedroom and a kitchen okay so the second I think you know where I'm going, right? It's some I think it's some IT common sense, that's how I call it. IT common sense, which is uh, information technology common sense. So the second one will be authorization. So you already identify so sorry, you already authenticate the user, so you're going to provide some privileges, permissions what you're allowed to do, what not allowed to do, whether you can go to the kitchen or whether you can go to the bedroom or not, whether you can even take a piss or not. So you can summarize this as permissions. Right? And this is uh, credentials. Great, so you already identify the user somehow, whether it's an independent independent database or 
through LDAP to the Active Directory. You already provide permissions to certain users. So now you want to know what is doing Bob inside your department because you are not in the department and somehow you're like you're, I don't know, picking up uh, a friend or a girlfriend, whatever. So you want to know, you want to see, you want to identify every step Bob is doing within your apartment. So what are you doing, like, what do you want to do in case you want to see Bob remotely, so you put the camera here, right? Let's take a camera like, like this with a lot of imagination, cam, right? So with the camera, you can see every movement, every everything, and you can record the camera, and then you can save what it was happening from 11 to 3 in the morning. Great. So that's accounting stuff. Accounting refers to basically. Uh, let's summarize with uh, okay you're literally accounting the movements in this case of the user you already authorized so what about you already explained in the department Jorge so what about IT so Bob log in to a virtual machine or to some router or some switch or some access point right this is wireless right <laughs> to wherever device so he need to do some management within this whether it's virtual or bare metal machine some network device some something related with the infrastructure right so you need to identify that Bob is Bob. You need to uh, basically say whether Bob is able to manage these devices or just deploy like show view, like read or yeah, like read only or read and write in sysadmin language or in networking maybe like a super user or yeah basically view or read view permissions and what about the accounting the accounting will save all the commands you're executing in the in, in the whole devices so if you're executing for instance show clock you will see at what time Bob deploy or issue show clock in the access point. So you hand, you're capable to handle the the access control in your IT environment through this server, through a AAA server. Great guys, so I clean up a little bit my my whiteboard. Oh, okay, so. At this point, great. So at this point, we already know what is a AAA. Let me let me write it here. AAA service server. Okay. So at this point, we already we all know what is a AAA server. It's a server, and we already know what we use it. We we use it for access control, right? So what is a AAA server? Covering uh, stands for um, authentication, authorization, and accounting, right? So we're going to explain each of the letter A's. Just create a mental map, just uh, some refresh. Authentication, just to identify the user is the user. To identify that the user really is the user, you know? Because you, you, you know it, but the computers, they don't know, so somehow whether you take your Active Directory or an independent data center, a data database, sorry. Authorization permissions you provide to this user 
an accounting which uh, which says about the registry the the information you save your storage uh, the activities so the activities what what this user is doing within the time he's accessing to some device right okay so if you want to deploy okay so we covered this and we covered this okay so let's jump into the protocols that's a cool thing so whoops pro, pro protocols right so if you want to deploy a triple a server you require a triple a protocol that will handle the, these triple a features that we already explained in order to get access control in your infrastructure right so we have two flavors we have two different protocols we have a tacx protocol and a radius protocol okay as you notice, I define well uh, as um, early in the video we define the RFC. So you will find in the RFC 1492 TACX and the RFC 2139 the radius. So I, at this point, I assume everyone understands what is an RFC. If you don't know what is an RFC, Basically, an RFC is a draft, a document or a memo created by, um, in this case, the IEEE or some big uh, organiz organizations to standardize protocols and networking protocols. Okay, so it's basically a document, memo. So if you want to check it out, more information. I want to show you some funny fact. I call it funny fact because even in the RFC. TACAX is identified as TCP and UDP because we haven't talked about the difference in between radio is just UDP only, right? So let's use another color, right? So UDP and then TCP, it looks cool, right? <laughs> I like this thing. So even the Cisco official documentation shows this in the RFC just shows like radios like even radios and TACX protocols use UDP only okay just to be aware of this I will show you this uh, with evidence so TACX Cisco official documentation saying that TCP UDP is working in the port 49 and radius is working in the port 1812 okay Okay, let me type it again. Fourteen twelve. Okay. So that's the protocols they will be using. So what are you gonna do right now? I'm gonna check it out the RFC. I already have it on my browser and my history. So I was using um, Firefox. So whoops. So let me open up my Firefox. So let me bring a new window. I was doing some <laughs> Android Studio stuff regarding with the um, yeah, create some apps for for Android. So we were saying RFC. We're gonna start with TACAX, right? The Mimo. So it's saying even in the title access control protocol, right? Is is uh, TAC access, uh, access control protocol as we already discussed before. So this memo, let me play with this window. So it was created up, uh, from the University of Minnesota in July the 1993. As you can see. Uh, even though it's an IETF organization document was created by the University of Minnesota. Anyways, that just just to let you know, you know, FYI stuff. Okay, so this is an access protocol. Then it's called by TACX. Sorry, it's called TACX. So I'm just type Control F to find within my browser, and then I'm gonna type 
49 okay so as you can see this point is discussing about UDP encoding okay this section this section describes the UDP encoding of the request that has just been described okay we haven't described it. you need to read the whole memo we're not gonna read it in this video but basically they explain to you how they doing the request how the user doing the request in order to uh, get the access control right so basically using UDP in the layer 4 of the OSI using the port 49 right as we already said so if we keep finding information about 49 and then I click enter then the client must format as a UDP request 49 you see basically this they, they're not providing TCP encoding you can find TCP encoding but they, they don't explain like they're using port 49 you can see this protocol does not use a reserve port for TCP at the point the document was written it was in 93 as you can you can notice here right great so at this point University of Minnesota state that TACAX was not um, need didn't have uh, let me put it again this protocol does not use a reserve port so what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna Google Cisco TACAX port well I even type it here port TCP as you can see okay we scroll down a little bit then you will see that Forty nine, you can see TACAX using TCP forty nine and radio using UDP. I I wrote eighteen twelve, read same it's also using for authentication authorization sixteen forty five of sixteen forty six and eighteen thirteen as you can see here. So what I'm gonna do I'm gonna type it also here. So we have a uh, eighty five right there, five and eighty six. So, if you need to deploy as a network engineer in triple A service and you own the firewall. Or you, your duties are covering the firewall, firewalling rules. You need to, in case the deployment was built by default, you need to allow either TCP UDP 49 and UDP 1645, 1646, 1812, and 1813 for radius and tagex, right? So yeah basically is this and this is this right so let's check the RFC 2139 uh, whoa it's here yes so we were discussing RFC yeah we're gonna type RFC 21 39 it's already here my history so you can see it's a radius accounting protocol right it didn't wrote living stone was the same guys I told you was they um, release radius also radius well it's it's here also you can see Livingstone enterprise was in 1997 control F 1812 didn't show 1712 I type 1812 and there is no results just 1813 you see 
so it's saying this memory documents radius counting protocol it's in the counting protocol radius is used in port 1318 in UDP data field. Okay, just to be clear, my goal was to show you some evidence in regard of what I was typing here, which will be important for you as a network engineer. Ports will be open, right? So basically, that's it from this video. We understood. Let me use green to close this so we understand what is uh, AAA why is just the RFCs the protocols we we're using and uh, yeah the meaning of the AAA letters so I hope guys this video on yeah the whole Parts, the whole wallets of this video, this video has been informative for you guys, and I will bring you up. I will try to create another video using Wireshark to show you like the behind the scenes, as I will call it, or bits by bits, how Radius and Takax protocol works. Because as I told you, Cisco uh, stating as um, the Takax server is build up just by TCP I mean over TCP so uh, you obviously have to see the three-way handshake the acknowledge numbers the sequence numbers the all the information regarding the window size how it works for the accounting and deploying the triple I services so guys again thank you very much for watching I hope this video is informative for you and keep in touch keep tuned Bye-bye.